Hello, my name is Hayley Dawson and I'll be going through this ILSA project video lecture on the NTR model with you. As explained in the video lecture on the NER model in module 2A, unit 4, quality in respeaking can be measured through different parameters such as delay, speed, accuracy, difficulty, cost and errors. In this video lecture, we will focus on accuracy in interlingual respeaking, and we will cover the basic requirements of the NTR model. We will explore other quality assessment models, look at translation and recognition errors and how they are assessed, look into the distribution of translation errors from some recent research, and finally, look at an example of NTR analysis. First, let's go over the basic requirements for a quality assessment model for interlingual respeaking. It should be functional and easy to apply. It should take into account not only the linguistic accuracy of the subtitles, but also the comparison to the original speech. It should account for the possibility of reduced and yet accurate subtitles, depending on the different national editing conventions. Provide information about not only the accuracy of the subtitles, but also other aspects of quality, such as delay, position, speed, character identification, etc. Account for the fact that not all errors have the same origin or impact on the viewer's comprehension. And finally, provide an assessment of quality, as well as an overall idea of aspects to be improved. In other words, food for thought as far as training is concerned. Various quality assessment models have evolved from one another, which brings us to the NTR model. The assessment of accuracy rates in speech recognition began with the WER model, which was first developed to assess accuracy of automatic speech recognition and was then used to assess quality in intralingual live subtitling for online programmes including live shows such as sports events and the news. The WER model measures the word correctness and word accuracy. However, the model does not account for instances when a text has been correctly edited. In such cases, the WER model would produce far lower accuracy rates compared to models that take respeaking into account. The NER model draws upon the basic requirements of the WER model, but it emphasises the need for human intervention, which is highlighted through the two additional elements of the model, correct additions, which account for editing that has not caused a loss of information, and assessment, in which the assessor can comment on issues such as the speed, delay and flow of the subtitles. Assessing the quality of interlingual live subtitles is a recent development in the area of media accessibility. In 2016, Surya attempted to adapt the NER model in her MA thesis by proposing the NERT model, in which the T incorporates the assessment of translation errors and makes a distinction between addition and translation errors. However, the two types of errors coexisting in one model means that it's difficult to see how interlingual editing can be distinguished from a change in meaning and introduces uncertainty when it comes to analysing the texts. The NTR model was developed to ensure that quality assessment for respoken texts extends to those that are produced interlingually. The NTR model uses a similar formula as the NER model. Addition errors have been omitted to incorporate the translation element, which recognises that the shift from intralingual to interlingual live subtitling is not a similar process. The NTR model guarantees criteria for assessing the accuracy of the translation element from the original utterances to the target text. And much like the NER acronym, NTR stands for the number of words, translation errors and recognition errors. 
The model features a set of categories for scoring the accuracy of content and form, as well as a three-level grading scale for translation and recognition errors. What we can see here is that translation errors can be assessed as either content errors or form errors, and we'll take a closer look at the definitions of these types of translation errors in a minute. The R stands for recognition errors, so that's the same as the NER model. But there are some differences in terminology between the two models. For example, correct additions in the NER model are referred to as effective additions in the NTR model. Different terms are used for error severity, although the same principles do apply. The NTR model accounts for two types of errors, translation errors and recognition errors. Translation errors are as a result of a respeaker's decisions during the respeaking process and the type of content that they are respeaking. For example, if the speech rate of a video is very high, a respeaker may opt to omit some text, causing an omission error. If dense information is included within a complex sentence, a respeaker may choose to omit the text, or if they do respeak it, they could run the risk of mistranslating it. Recognition errors are as a result of the software not understanding what the respeaker has dictated. To a certain extent, the respeaker can also control recognition errors by dictating clearly, at a good pace, and by training the speech recognition software. Ultimately, an easy way to refer to translation and recognition errors is that translation errors are caused by a respeaker and recognition errors are usually caused by the speech recognition software. Many examples of recognition errors were given in Module 2A in the video lecture on advanced intralingual respeaking. You may want to refer back to it to see some examples of recognition errors. The error coding scheme for the NTR model accounts for minor, major and critical translation and recognition errors, as opposed to the minor, standard and serious errors that are accounted for in the NER model. This adaptation highlights the relationship between major and minor errors and emphasises the severity of critical errors. Minor errors mean that the text can be followed but the meaning or the flow of the text may sometimes be interrupted, making it difficult to recognise original words. Major errors do not result in new meanings, but do emit ideas from the text. Critical errors present factual mistakes or misleading information that create a new sense in the target text. When you analyse your respoken texts with the NTR model, you may incur translation errors, which can be either content or form errors. So first, let's take a look at the three types of content errors. Content omission errors are omitted text of dependent or independent idea units. An independent idea unit is often a sentence and something that makes sense as a full message. A dependent idea unit is often a complement and something that provides information about the who, what, where, when or why piece of information of a full sentence. Content substitution errors are substituted text that result in mistranslations. Content addition errors are additions in the target text that do not appear in the original text. Now, let's take a look at form errors. Form correctness errors are caused by a poor use of grammar or punctuation. Form style errors are variations in the appropriateness, naturalness and register of the text. Effective additions are variations in the target text that do not cause any loss of information and could improve the target text. For example, condensation of filler words and unnecessary repetitions. 
Now that we've looked at the different types of translation errors, I'd like to share some information on the distribution of translation errors with you. In 2018, an experiment was carried out to test the interlingual re-speaking performance of 44 subtitling and interpreting students. This pie chart shows the distribution of the subtypes of translation errors from the NTR analysis of each student's interlingual re-speaking exercises. A large proportion of translation errors made were content omission and content substitution errors. Form correctness errors were the third most common type of translation errors made. The least common translation errors were content addition and form style errors. We can see here that over half of the translation errors made were content omission errors. This could be put down to various factors. The first being speed, as a re-speaker may omit information because they cannot keep up with the speech rate that the source text is being delivered at. The second being mishearing or not hearing the source text, as a re-speaker may miss information because they are focusing on the delivery of the live translation and on their recognition. The third, not understanding what was said in the source language, as a re-speaker may omit the text completely. Content substitution errors, or in other words, mistranslations, are also very common. This could be put down to the same factors. So speed, mishearing or not hearing the source text, or not understanding what was said in the source language. Mistranslations can be caused when a re-speaker, instead of omitting the information, attempts to translate at a very high speed, and often using the very first translation that they think of, and not understanding the source text but attempting to translate it anyway. Here is an example of NTR analysis. In this case, the source text was in English and was respoken interlingually into Spanish. What you can see on screen is an extract of the much longer respoken text and NTR analysis. This template can be quite useful to carry out an NTR analysis. The first column is the transcribed audio of the source text. The second column is the respoken output. The third column gives space to note any translation and recognition errors and effective additions. The source text and respoken text are compared and translation and recognition errors are marked up. As we can see in the second column, the errors are in red and the effective additions are in yellow. Errors are categorised as per the NTR model and then scored depending on whether the error is minor, major or critical. Towards the end of the analysis, there is a space to tally up the number of translation and recognition errors and effective additions made and apply the NTR formula to calculate an accuracy rate and give an equivalent score out of 10. As high accuracy rates are more common in intralingual than in interlingual live subtitling, the NTR model recalculates the accuracy rate on a standard 10-point scale. An accuracy rate of 98% is equivalent to a 5 out of 10 on a 10-point scale, which indicates that 98% is satisfactory. You may wish to refer to the article on the NTR model to take a closer look at this. You may have already come across these translation errors and these issues while practising interlingual re-speaking in this module. In Module 3A, you will have the chance to apply the NTR model to assess your interlingual re-spoken outputs. For this, transcripts and templates like the one that you saw in the previous slide are available for each video provided in the exercises. There are also some short readings on each type of translation error with examples in different languages. Do remember that although quality assessment models such as the NTR model focus on the end product, they can also be used in your training as a form of self-assessment as the quantities of errors that you make can help to identify your strengths and weaknesses in interlingual speaking. 
Well done for almost completing Module 2B and good luck for Module 3A.